Hey, everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And it's hard to get highlights of this guy. Not sure what's going to play behind me, but I'll just let it roll. Christian Dvorak. Bit of a sleeper on the Coyotes. Not too many people outside of the desert really know who he is. He's come from a history of victory and point getting. Drafted in the second round in 2014. U.S. born player Christian Dvorak. Played his uh, junior hockey in the OHL with the London Knights teammates. A uh, teammate of Max Domi, Mitch Marner, and I'm pretty sure Matthew Kachuk as well. Um, in his draft year, he brought the London Knights to an OHL championship and the Memorial Cup championship, and he notched 121 points in 59 games, scoring over 50 goals. I mean, Dvorak is uh, sneaky offensively in the NHL, but he was blatantly offensive. In the OHL, he great hands, great shot, very offensive, captain of that London Knights team. So Christian Dvorak, he had a great junior career, and he's having a tough time translating it in the NHL. Let's get into it. Last year, he scored 15 goals and had a total of 33 points in 78 games. Last season, he had the same number of goals, 15, with 37 points in the same number of games. So his point production kind of was consistent compared to his rookie year. But the numbers that I see that are different is his face-off percentage was up 5%. In his rookie year, it was 46. And last year, he brought up to 51, which is great to see an increase in face-offs. He's our, he's our third uh, third-line center. Hopefully, Strom takes that second-line center away from him. And his shot production, I mean, he doubled his shots since his rookie year. And even though he scored the same number of goals, it just shows that he's shooting the puck more. He's more confident. Talkett is telling him to shoot the puck. And um, even though they're not going in, he's more confident in his shot. He works on his shot. Um, his shot percentage in his rookie year was 17%, which is unsustainable. 100% um, unsustainable. It dropped down to 10% last year and uh, doubling his shots lowering his shot percentage that's why he scored the same amount of goals but 15 just like Christian Fisher and Brendan Perlini he's right there at 20 goals he's just gotta you know be more confident in his offensive game he's a great two-way center a great shutdown center could play on the PK doesn't really get much power play time I think on the second unit he'll come out there but he's got a he's got a wicked shot, wicked accurate shot, and he could drive the net. You know, a couple goals last season. I remember one against Boston. He just drove the puck to the net himself and scored it past Rask. And that's what we need from him night in and night out. Be more consistent offensively compared to the other um, younger players on the team. He started out of the gate really slow. He had two goals in his first 20 games of the season. And then he started to take it up a notch. He was scoring maybe every third game or so. But he had three stretches of eight or nine games of not scoring. Even uh, to end the season, he went on an eight-game goalless drought. And uh, like I said, with uh, Christian Fisher and Perlini, these guys got to learn how to shorten those droughts, be more consistent on a nightly basis, and uh, start producing more. I mean... These guys can't be 30-point players anymore. They got to bring it up to 40 and 50. They got to break 20 goals. I mean, they have to. If this team wants to succeed in any other way, they need goal scoring. We can't just rely on Ranta and our decor when it's healthy to play the way it was. they were playing uh, to end out the season. I mean, to end out the season, Cowboys are winning 2-1, 3-1 games, 3-2 games, and they need that insurance goal to play with more mojo and um, play with more confidence. They can't, you know, dial it back and try to just turn into defensive mode to close out games. They got to start closing out games by scoring more goals and um, just relentlessly overpowering the other team. I think that's the next step for this team is just playing their game and scoring goals in bunches like how the younger teams are doing, like Boston, Toronto, Vegas, 
they score in bunches and they overwhelm you that way. It's not just playing sticky defense to win games anymore. So, yeah, Dvorak, I mean, he's a second rounder. He's not even a first rounder. So maybe expectations a bit too high. But he had a great, great junior career, capping his team to championships, scoring over 50 goals, getting over 100 points. And we see glimpses of it very rarely. And we just need him to start um, being more offensive, taking that offensive role. I think Tippett being his first coach in the NHL really geared him towards that shutdown centerman. And now it's Tockett's job to say, hey, man, you used to score a lot in junior. You used to be an offensively gifted player on a top line in the OHL. You won championships. You were the captain. Bring that to our team because this team needs that secondary scoring touch night in and night out. Now that hopefully Strom gets in the lineup, we could get three lines going of goals and have that shut down line of Richardson, Marnook, and Cousins really shut down the opposition and have three lines rolling and scoring goals, not only relying on Keller. So it's what I like to see from Dvorak. Be more offensive. He's got the skill. Just remember how he played junior and translate that to the NHL. I like that his face-off percentages are increasing. He's taking more shots. He's more confident, and uh, he's got to get it going here. Maybe new line mates next season, maybe Perlini, maybe Domi, uh, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully Dvorak has a breakthrough year. I'm kind of hoping that for Fisher and Perlini as well. These guys got to get over 20 goals guaranteed, and uh, things will just be fine. That's it for me, Christian Dvorak. Maybe watch out for him. Um, he's a quiet guy. Doesn't really. He's not really outspoken as much as Domi, obviously. And um, yeah, not too many videos on Dvorak on YouTube. So let's get this guy some praise, you know. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.